Welcome guys. Thanks for joining again. Good to see everybody. And like I said, we're here at our last um, workshop, this time under the theme of sharing. And we're joined by Roundhouse. Um, Roundhouse being uh, Brendan and Noemi up in, well, up in my corner. Um, you guys are joining us from, you said Nevada right now. Uh, you are teaching currently at Texas Tech University and uh, USC in Los Angeles. Um, you've been, you've been past workshop leaders and hopefully future workshop leaders of Space Saloon, um, leading some very interesting, uh, workshops in the desert, um, and Roundhouse in general. I mean, I, I think you guys will get into this a bit more, but Roundhouse is, you know, why we thought you'd be perfect for this section, um, is, is a bit of a curatorial platform that does a lot of different let's say research engagements um, in the themes of architecture. Um, and, you know, we, we really like the way you have different forms of output and engagement with those processes. And so, um, we, you know, you guys have put together a really interesting workshop for today, uh, which I think is a very useful tool and skill that we all should understand. Um, and it's in Wikipedia, but I think it also has to do with a lot of refinement and presentation and how do we kind of coalesce our ideas and our research into something um, presentable to the public in that sense, hence the theme sharing. Um, so I'll, I'll shut up and I'll uh, pass the mic over to you guys now. Um, we'll do this for, I don't know, probably about 45 minutes to an hour and have questions and then wrap it up hopefully before 12 30 or 1 30 my time, wherever you guys are in 90 minutes. Um, yeah, thank you again for, for yeah, cool. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Uh, it's nice to be repeat customers, participants. I don't know what the correct term, but yeah, it was really fantastic to work with space saloon out in the desert at the last design build festival and our workshop was totally amazing. Happy to be back and doing this one virtually. It's a really exciting, um, series you're putting together in light of how especially in light of how like devastating the world is right now. So <laughs> thanks for having us. I think today in, we're, you know, we're coming three times this week. And so today we're just going to do a presentation that shows some of these outputs and, and formats that we work in and that will kind of set up the workshop that will lead on Wednesday and Friday. Yeah. And today we want to introduce a little bit of our practice, but also how, uh, like you were saying, Danny, you really, relates to uh, sharing and how that's an important uh, team for us, both in the practice in general and in the workshop that uh, we are leading uh, here this week. So we have a presentation. Let me find it and then figure out how to share my screen, our screen, I should say. Nope, nope, no. Nope. Maybe this. OK, yeah. And then oh, here we go. Let's try how, oh my God. This is present. So, <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I think you have to choose that. Oh, and then, and then you. Ah, OK. We shared the screen. You see it? So now you're oh. seeing yourself. OK. Amazing. That is, that is you now very meta. Screen. Yes. Okay. And now you can go back into okay. this tab. You're ready. Here we go. Bingo. You're now seeing a screen that says sharing. Well, or loading. 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 Yes. Okay, cool. Okay. okay. Ta -da! That's it. And now I'm probably going to shut up and Noemi's going to do most of the talking and I'll just click forward. Okay. So, um, we have prepared, um, this uh, presentation about, again, our practice and the team of sharing um, for uh, satellite. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for satellite, satellite lab. So we are roundhouse platform. Uh, one thing that when we receive the term sharing, uh, in many ways, and I'll go over this in details, like sharing is a really important part of um, the work we do. This is what we decided on uh, calling our practice a platform rather than 
anything else, a firm, whatever, a project, because we really have this idea that uh, it's a place for different people to land and jump off and just gather and exchange. Um, so that idea of platform worked really well for, for us. And when we thought of this workshop, one thing we um, wanted to be doing was exploring Wikipedia. So we have this little sentence, the English Wikipedia includes uh, six uh, million articles and uh, 600 new articles every single day. Um, and we think that this is something really interesting because it's this open source a uh, platform that is extremely, extremely large and proliferating and everyone can contribute to uh, it. And a lot of people um, go out of their way uh, to uh, contribute to uh, it every single day. So I was reading the stats, every uh, 1.9 second an edit is entered in the encyclopedia. So it's a lot of people just taking time uh, to share knowledge and information with others freely. And uh, we are like such a much, much, much smaller scale, obviously, but there's a lot of this idea. Uh, some of the things that we share affinities with Wikipedia is um, this idea of uh, horizontality or peer-to-peer -peer learning uh, and exchange uh, that we use in our practice and very much the idea of collaboration of different people coming together to work on something. So this is a team we have at heart and one that will explore in this workshop. Um, so what is the platform again? So it's a collaboration with, between myself, Noemi Desplan-Lichtert, and uh, Brendan sullivan Shea. And some of the things that we do is to investigate um, altered perception, experimental documentation, and uh, radical preservation of landscape, which is kind of a recurring theme as well, and site-specific histories, and the cultural commons. So I'm sure that sounds like a little vague and cryptic, but hopefully as we walk you through some of the project, it'll make a little bit more sense. Uh, do you want to add something? You just interrupt me. So this is a little gif. Uh, that Brendan made that hopefully uh, shows that uh, the practice uh, we have is kind of uh, diverse. So from workshop to labs to exploring robotics, exhibition, um, digital design, computation, uh, some performance of architecture, uh, Uh, and so on and so forth. collective forms this is the project that anastasia was mentioning which we did recently in uh, texas um so in collaboration with id which is another space saloon uh team of friends we uh basically uh this is the ag ham so aggregate habitat we went to uh, Texas desert, dig two giant holes, broke our back, papier mache the holes, let it dry and flip it until it becomes these um, uh, little habitats, right? So basically each hole, uh, papier mache cast gets reversed. The two holes are symmetrical and they create the um, shell for the other habitat or house. Um, we had friends visit and socially distance and observe it in the middle of COVID. Um, and yeah, anything you want to add on that? No. Urban Labs. This is, so what we just show you is kind of the most recent project. <laughs> now let's move on to the most ancient project. This is kind of how the uh, collaboration between Brendan and I started by doing these urban laboratories that are uh, part workshop and part um, guided tour or exploration of a site. This is uh, a model that both of us were kind of doing um, similar things uh, before, but that we also very much developed together. And these are images of one of the first sites that we uh, explored through these urban labs. This is Taylor Yard. This is 
an abandoned rail yard in Glassville Park, Los Angeles. Since then, it's been acquired by um, the city and uh, I haven't been in LA in a while, but from what I understand has drastically changed um, to become a park. But at the time that we had the labs, a lot of the remains of all the um, classification yards, so all the industrial train, uh, uh, either the tracks or at the center, the central image is the footprint of the demolished roundhouse, which is also where uh, the name comes from of, of the platform. Um, yeah, so we explored three different teams. Um, self-seeded plants and how they testified of the history of the site, uh, psychogeographies, and uh, uh, surveying the land that was really studying the remains of the demolished building. So that's an example of the weeds, right, or self-seeded plants. This is um, different images of archives and um, specifically like blueprints or vellums, just archival drawing we found. Um, it's another story to tell, but that we um, searched for the drawings of that site and eventually found them and uh, brought reproduction of those on site. So um, archival research and Sharing and displaying archive is very much part of uh, our practice, both in the workshop and exhibition that we do. Um, that's another uh, urban lab. That one is, uh, maybe some of you will recognize it, is from a last summer space saloon, right? So Morongo Valley. We have on the left a picture of um, Brendan carrying a backpack that contains a mile of string and um, uh, us with uh, other participants, space saloon people walking a mile and uh, untreading that uh, trend to measure. Why a mile? So maybe the right will, the image on the right will explain that a little bit more. Basically, um, we were inspired by the Jefferson grid. So um, which is this unit of, of measurement and dividing the land that is very uh, abstract, right? It's just easy to draw. So it's a grid of one mile per one mile per one mile uh, squares all around uh, that was used to divide and define the U.S. land. Um, and as disconnected from the land as it is and as absurd as it might seem, it still holds very much uh consequences that are visual in the landscape of the us so you'll see many uh of those like uh square miles visible in aerial footage right so uh we have one here square mile that was all around the um, space saloon camp of last summer and all the dots you see is us trying to, wa to walk this um, square mile and document it, taking pictures of the sky and the ground. So the um, workshop was called Lost Horizon, this idea that the horizon lays between sky and the ground, but that instead of looking at the horizon itself, we would like abstract it by uh, looking at both objects directly. Um, other component of that workshop included, well, on the left, taking pictures of the sky, on the right, using processing to, uh, do you want to explain that more, like code some uh, uh, artwork uh, using the blue of the sky, and then uh, a knitting workshop that was meant as um, more of an analog version of coding as again, it is using this kind of binary system of uh, either coding or points in anything. That's one of the um, final outcome we did. 
uh, for this project. So the top is the a set of flash drive with all the data. The bottom, the middle row is different um, colors of blue based on the RGB values of the picture we've taken of the sky uh, with the other participants. And the little rulers at the bottom are um, defining the graininess of the ground. And before I move on, basically these like um, urban labs are, the idea is to share, of course, time by exploring a space together in uh, a performative manner, right? Either by, uh, you know, in some instances, we've kind of curated derive, like prompted some uh, drifting around a site. In this case, it was the mile, uh, of string, so adding some performative aspect to an exploration of a site uh, as a way to share this exploration and share an impression of the, the, the site, but also trigger conversation and then share discussions and um, observations and any type of insight found by doing this uh, together. Exhibitions. Exhibitions is more about um, sharing some of uh, the outcomes of our research. This is back to the Taylor Yard project. Uh, those are some of the archival drawings we found. So um, lots of blueprints on the right. It's more vellums that were very, very large scale. Um, a lot of what we like to do is what um, when there's an exhibition would be public programming, right? So this is a um, white glove party, so an open archive where some of the drawings that didn't make it to the walls were then uh, shown, uh, just unroll one after the other because they wouldn't fit in the gallery and didn't make the cut. But again, this idea of like sharing conversation, sharing uh, some of the findings and, um, and just, again, having a, a discussion about uh, some of the work we're doing with uh, peers. Public programming. Public pro programming is a performance series. We've had two seasons of it. The first one um, was in Los Angeles. The second one started in Los Angeles and ended in Texas. Uh, the first one was at 2426, which is a space that Brendan and I ran in uh, Los Angeles in Mid-City. And we then had our second edition between uh, WUHO, so the Woodbury Architecture Gallery, and Hollywood Boulevard of uh, the College of Architecture and some of its uh, indoor spaces as well. So, what is public programming? Can I lower this? Yeah. So public programming is a performance series, which might sound uh, a little bit odd for architecture, but we're basically, uh, we were inspired by the way that silent movies are, have, uh, set visuals, but, thank you, but have live music. And we kind of wanted to uh, switch the tables on that and have a set um, soundtrack and then ask uh, guests, architects and artists to kind of VJ the visuals of the performance. So on the left, you see a score of uh, Lost Horizon, which was a performance that uh, we did in collaboration with Maxime Lefebvre. And uh, we worked on creating this uh, world of Shangri-La to basically illustrate the soundtrack of a uh, radio show. Uh, was it called Shangri-La? Lost Horizon is the name of the radio show. Um, so again, just like uh, 
it's partly improvised, but it's also scored or scripted as you can see on the left. These are two examples of two performances, the last ones, I guess. Oops. In, thank you, check the stack. So on the left, we have Jack Stewart Kessner and Phoebe Webster uh, created this environment of uh, see through fabric that. Uh, archival image of Philadelphia were projected on, and the grid of the fabric itself is based on the grid of city blocks in Philadelphia, which uh, you see better in plan than you might in these images, but take our word for it. On the right, we have the Hitch brothers, so uh, Lucas and Martin from ID, who did this situationist performance um, in collaboration with the students at Tech, where um, we printed uh, Sanborn maps of uh, Los Angeles. So the original um, situationist mapping was of Paris, but uh, this performance is about Los Angeles and uh, did this kind of collaborative painting of red arrows, again, inspired by the uh, maps of uh, psychogeography and the situation. So that again worked as a 45 minute performance that started um, mostly with just uh, Martin and Lucas and then became much more uh, collaborative. So again, these are about not only sharing some teams and some uh, design that we've been doing, but also kind of allowing, uh, in this case, mostly students to interact. That's the um, performance in collaboration with SPAN and Sarah Suarez. SPAN is the Spatial Awareness Network in Los Angeles. Uh, their performance was called Los Angeles is Endless Like a Scroll. This one was at the Wuho Gallery in Hollywood. So just to give you a sense that they basically all take very different uh, shapes, at, at least formally. Um, but the team of uh, improvised visual and set soundtrack is kind of a consistent um, between the performances. So now, the edit a -tons. What is an edit a -tons? So it's like a marathon of editing, right? Uh, there are events for collectively uh, editing Wikipedia articles, uh, true documenting and digitizing abandoned histories, demolished architecture, forgotten site, excavated maps, um, among other stuff, but those are kind of the team that we have personally explored. And the editatons facilitate sifting, sorting, and broadcasting information in real time. That's a picture of the very first one we uh, did. Uh, we had this advertisement for it that says libation for citations. We'll get into the details of it, but a lot of Wikipedia is properly citing your sources for the information not to be taken down. So here comes the citation. The libation is that we were serving drinks, which we wish we could do with you. But not only we're remote, but it's also 9 a.m. for some of us. So that's not appropriate. This is an example. So that's, again, the space we run in LA, 2426. And those are some of the uh, sources that we made available. Uh, for people to um, look through and uh, use to uh, create the edits. So part of the job is kind of creating the sources and making them available. So we've organized these uh, at 2426 in LA. Um, this is one that Brendan worked on with the USC School of Architecture. That's probably the biggest that uh for us ever happened and that's uh, when people used to be able to get together we also had some at otis and college of art and design so we've had some 
on different teams, but one team that we have had at least five editatons on was architecture and feminism. So art and feminism is a yearly campaign to improve the content on uh, and by women on the encyclopedia on Wikipedia. And we have kind of tag along that worldwide campaign to organize architecture plus feminism workshops. So this is just a start um, to tell you basically why we're doing those uh, art plus feminism, architecture plus feminism, uh, and why the art plus feminism campaign exists. Uh, um, which is that the, basically the gender gap is really important in Wikipedia. Uh, less than 10% of the contributors identify as female, um, which uh, has direct consequences in the content of the encyclopedia itself as well. So it's both uh, in terms of who are the editors contributing, but also what is the quality um, and the type of information that you uh, found on the encyclopedia. Uh, so again, so Wikipedia has fewer and less extensive article on women. Um, and there's uh, a lot of gender biases in biographical article. One of the most flagrant uh, um, example might be that women often have or define uh, according to who their male partner is in their uh, introduction of the article, which seems to never happen when uh, men figures, right? So um, that would be one of the things that these editors are trying to resist and improve. This is uh, a graph of the household that are editing Wikipedia. This is, uh, keep in mind, it's only for the English version of the encyclopedia, but it still shows that the US is number one, closely followed by Canada, Australia, and India, uh, but that uh, overall there is still a Western world kind of uh, dominance in terms of uh, contributing to the encyclopedia. That's uh, at a smaller scale, this is the US. So one thing that you can um, tell, so whatever is green is where there are the most contributors, which is mostly uh, the coast, the most uh, uh, densely populated spaces and, and cities. This is some of the dashboards of the different Editaton we've organized in uh, different uh, cities and uh, parts of the world. Um, and some of the stats that, um, that, so basically some of the stats about the editors, the number of edits, uh, the numbers of views and so on and so forth. So We'll go over that in more detail, but the dashboard is a really good tool for collecting data. It's not a really good tool for visualizing data, which is something that we hope to also uh, uh, address in this workshop, but um, it's a good one for, for collecting a lot of information, which uh, is something we'll be working with as well. Um, so that's, uh, House Round is like our wiki account, and we have uh, organized seven editatons uh, and overall uh, recruited 139 uh, editors. One thing that is kind of cool is if you look at the article views, these keep um, growing. And um, after the events are over, because um, people can uh, still view the edits that have been made. You'll see two jumps in the graph. Uh, both are in March because uh, Art Plus Feminism happens in March. And that's when we hold our events um, most of the time. Uh, that's a funny graph. Um, the, the six circles that you have at the center. So basically this is the numbers 
of uh, page views that an article has. So the six uh, uh, circles at the center are kind of very broad uh, but important uh, teams of a subject, I should say, of biology. So you have like climate, you have ecosystem, you have specific climate, and this is how much views they get. And then um, the larger circle is the Labrador dog page. Um, Labrador Retriever, which uh, is like a very, very popular article on Wikipedia. So but back to the sharing team, what are we hoping to be sharing in this um, workshop? We're hoping to be sharing knowledge, we're hoping to be sharing skills, we're hoping to share information. Um, knowledge is basically where we will be finding, so the sources, the information. Skills is this in-between step, which is learning how to actually edit the encyclopedia. And um, information is basically once the knowledge is put on the encyclopedia, it becomes information for uh, anyone to uh, consult and retrieve. So we have a form we would like uh, you to fill. You want to take over, Brendan? Um, that we can, I think we can stop screen sharing. That we'll be giving you. There we go. More back. Are you looking for the chat? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it is. Can someone click on the form and see what it, that works? Cool, thanks, Anna. Uh, so we would ask you to uh, fill this uh, within the next 24 hours, wherever that brings you, so that we can use the response to kind of tailor uh, the workshop of uh, Wednesday. So this is for us to um, kind of uh, develop a team. Do you want to go over each questions maybe a little bit, Brennan? No? Okay. Um, so if it's not clear, maybe you can just uh, email us. And, but I think it, it seems straightforward enough, right? Um, I'm also hoping that maybe we can, like now that we spoke so much about ourselves, that maybe we can like all unmute ourselves a little bit and kind of share uh, who we are and where we're at, and uh, as a way to lead into the kind of question period of today. If there is, yeah. So, yeah. If the if if there isn't anything else you need us to urgently address, Danny, I'm thinking maybe we could just each say. Uh, just introduce ourselves by name and who we are and where we're at, just to give us a sense of um, the yeah, team I, and then I, answer questions. I just maybe a quick note about formats, um, just to be clear to everyone that today is more of an introduction and a warm up, and Wednesday it will be a pretty um, intensive, let's say, um, skill learning, but also edit a thon itself. Um, so I encourage everyone and those who are maybe watching this later to to definitely join on Wednesday with kind of full focus because that's when the action will happen. So. Yeah. Um, also, we noticed it's it's hard for volunteers to step up, so it's better if we just pick on people. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> it goes easier that way. Well, I can go in the order of the screen. Yeah, um, I mean, the other option is that the form is going to ask all kinds of questions of everyone. And we could just do in after people have filled out the form and see what is our interest. So taking the intros for Wednesday, up to you. I just think okay. Wednesday will okay. be packed. I think Wednesday will be packed. So, uh, yeah, I think for the, or do you guys want to start with questions maybe? Do you have any questions about the presentation or the upcoming workshop? Mm. 
No, you're right, Danny. Everyone is very quiet. <laughs> um, Anna, you were the like first one on my screen, <laughs> and I see you unmuted yourself. Yeah. So if you <laughs> tell us, do you, well, I guess I have a question. So, do you guys all know each other, and we're like arriving in a group of people who are already well? like aware of each other or is everyone not, new to everyone okay okay not well aware i guess we met uh, each other during previous workshop but not everyone for example i invited michelle my friend maybe she will speak after she that's her first time uh, hi. <laughs> hi michelle yeah i guess uh, uh, maybe more detail about the workshop we will so danny you mentioned we'll be editing for that hour and a half on wednesday yeah. And, but we do some homework of like the topic or, or you are you gonna share the topic later? The homework is for you to tell us about you. And once we have the collective you responses, we'll kind of shape a theme that everyone can respond to. And then there'll be particular pages. We'll give you a few options to choose from and you can maybe like speed date them. But we'll teach you how to <laughs> edit Wikipedia if you don't have an account. Please sign up for an account before, but if you don't, we'll help you sign up for one. We'll have you register for a dashboard so you'll learn how your, all of your Wikipedia edits can be recorded so that we can work with that data later. And then we'll also have you share some of your experiences um, with one of your colleagues or collaborators, one of these heads on the screens. You'll kind of talk to them through the editing process so you can help um, determine what the best page to edit is or where you can find potential resources or what's likely to get taken up or taken down. So that'll happen on Wednesday. And then we're thinking on Friday, we'll do a little bit more of the kind of analysis of what happened on Wednesday. So like if Wednesday's production, Friday is a little bit of post-production. Gotcha. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Anna and uh, I live in Berkeley and uh, I'm an urban designer and architect originally, but I'm looking uh for myself what what's next for me and uh yeah for now just participating in the workshop and learning um uh, i don't know how much more uh i can share uh i guess no, it's awesome. i guess i like the questions we're gonna discuss based on the questions uh later on on wednesday or friday cool so, and how do you know michelle oh we actually didn't we met in Los Angeles and we did an art show together um, mm. that she curated and I participated. Yeah, and we are friends. Now she moved to Berkeley and we're even closer. Jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, maybe I should uh, share now. Um, yeah, please yeah. go ahead. Yeah, so Anna invited me, um, I think yesterday, told me about it a couple days before. I'd followed her kind of path when she went to the desert and was creating all these structures. And um, I've been interested in that space. I studied sculpture in grad school and I, you know, paint, make art, um, I've curated a show. And um, I'm really inspired by all the work that you shared. And I'm excited to kind of explore the format here and come up with some cool ideas of uh, digital art, uh, space-specific artwork. And um, I think I'll know more once I read and answer all the questions. Cool. Michelle, this is totally going to put you on the spot. Uh, of the faces you see on the screen, who do you think is the most likely person to have a Wikipedia account already? Oh, that's a great question. Well, you. Uh, oh, whatever. <laughs> that doesn't count here. Let me Game in the screen. system. No, I, well, I'm actually, oh, I'm on my phone, so. Oh, so you can't see. So oh, I can't really see. to the stats we've shared, you should choose a man. You'd have nine <laughs> times more chances to be right if you choose one of the men among us than if you choose a woman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, according to the uh, architecture and feminism section, you're probably right. I don't have an account, but I'm going to make one today. Okay, cool. Nick, you're the only male face I see on camera. Do you have a Wikipedia account? 
I don't. Uh, but I will. I will today. Uh, yeah. So I'll I'll just say hey. I'm uh, I'm over on the East Coast uh, in Portland, Maine, uh, and I'm doing the Space Saloon Fellowship this summer as a way to broaden my design knowledge. My background is mostly in uh, being an event producer and an arts programmer, um, but I'm been sort of interested in design and architecture for a long time. So I'm not professionally trained or credentialed, but I'm, uh, I'm sort of using this as a way to, to explore lots of different ideas this summer and just jump into different kinds of tool sets and stuff like that. So that's awesome. Thank you for joining us. Nick, who do you think has the, the second coolest curtains? Cause I can tell indirectly that you have like a very cool facade system sitting outside of your apartment. Yeah, I have. Well, the 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 perforated thing is a uh, Swedish winter camo. There we uh, go. I bought at a surplus store. Um, I I don't know. I uh, I choose. I like. I, I feel like Anna Anastasia has got something interesting on the edge of her frame. There, it's red. Is that red? Yeah. yeah. Is that red? Sorry. This is this is the most interactive session I think we've ever had on Space Saloon. Well, here we go. Yeah. Time to share. Yeah. Um, okay. The, but if we bounce somewhere, I'm just going to just bounce to somewhere else. Yeah. Yep. Also, I'm, I'm sorry, guys, that I joined late, so I think I'll need to watch the beginning of your presentation to kind of really understand, get myself situated for the week, but I'll, I'll catch up. If, here, I can give you the, the – I'm sorry to do a disservice to you, knowing me like this, but, like, hey, we're Roundhouse. We share a lot of different formats of stuff. Okay. So there we go. That was a clearer, more concise version of my presentation. No, no, no. I think the depth helps. Okay, wait. You were going to choose someone else? Yeah, like, uh, out of the order of the name, Kelsey, can you tell us a little bit of who you are? And if you have a Wikipedia account? <laughs> so I do not have a Wikipedia account, but I will later. Um, I am in Charleston, South Carolina, and my background is in architecture, and I'm doing the Space Loon Fellowship, kind of just figuring out what's next right now. But yeah, it's been really interesting listening to all of the presentations and your presentation and kind of seeing all the different design places you can go. So it's been very helpful and informative. I like it. Cool. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Cool, thanks. Uh, Crystal, do you want to go next? Hi, I'm Crystal. Um, I don't have a Wikipedia. <laughs> um, I'm uh, going into my fourth year of architecture school at Cal Poly Pomona. Um, I live in LA and I joined the Space Saloon Fellowship to kind of um, branch out and do more of like conceptual and sort of do stuff I'm not super comfortable with um, to get to know more. And yeah, it's been a lot of fun so far. I really enjoy the workshops. Um, they've challenged me in a lot of ways, so it's been fun. Crystal, I got to know, what is your favorite item in the Cal Poly Pomona farm store? Oh, um, there's this there's this cheese. It's called strawberry champagne cheese. It's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> they have, like, the weirdest jams I've ever seen in that yeah. store. And they're all out of my budget, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, but their orange juice is really good, too. <laughs> that That's like one of the coolest places in the world. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. That's really awesome. I've got to know, who is the architecture story? Mm. Or are they going to remain anonymous? They're a spy. Oh, Should wow. Can, I can, we can out them. Can you? No, Justine, can, can we back. like force on mute? No. Uh, can't force uh, mute. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. We can only force mute. Okay. okay. <laughs> you can only like silence people. You can't out them. Okay. Um, who's next on the list? Lucy. Miss Lucy. Oh, hi, Lucy. Hi. Um. I'm living in Oakland, California, and I just graduated in multidisciplinary design um, from the University of Utah. 
And I'm doing Satellite Lab as a way to keep learning and pretend I'm still in school because I had such an anticlimactic graduation in May. <laughs> <laughs> this is my way of like lying to myself and pretending I never graduated. It's also like, on the other hand, could be like the Zoom commencement that never ends. Mm -hmm. yeah, Does that mean we have to do a ceremony? Yeah. yeah, at the end of every age, yeah. right? And we're also the last workshop, right? So maybe we have to have a fake graduation on Friday. Is, is the University of Utah in Provo? No, it's in Salt Lake. Oh, yeah, cool. BYU mm -hmm. is in Provo? Yeah. Okay, okay. Is, is there beef there? Is that like a... Yes, there, it's, oh, okay. there's a sports rivalry. Okay. 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 Yeah. Cool. Well, nice to meet you. Thank you so much yeah. for joining us. Yeah. Thank you. We're back here. Yeah. Do you want to tell us who you are? I mean, we know, but I guess other people don't. Yeah. Oh, I think Banana is like fanning me so that I get to compete with your look. <laughs> I, I, did, did you say me? I found I didn't. I wasn't like I couldn't hear exactly everything I was going to say. Oh, I think we were just asking people to introduce themselves. You're lagging a little bit. So I just so I don't know. I think it's my speaker. Um, no, I no. I was wondering if you make on the list. <laughs> you? Yeah. And no, I don't know if you were called. I feel like I'm in roll call. <laughs> You're being called, Rebecca. Wait, I missed that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Rebecca. I don't know if, if you were calling on someone else, but um, I'm doing Spatially Lab because we wanted to do something that would connect our, our friends from all over the world and meet some new participants and sort of learn learn from them as they learn from us. And I am super interested by Wikipedia because I use it every single day and I've never thought about the power structures behind it. And I've never really been conscious of how things actually get changed on that sort of platform. Um, Hate writing though, so I'm worried that I'm going to be stuck in the edit 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 being like, no, oh, I have to write myself. But um, yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, I think one of the reason why we like doing those editathon and um, we also often do them with students is that Wikipedia is like something that I'm assuming all of us use, right, and consume, like access and read the articles either in detail or just skim through them. But even if you just do a Google search for a date or whatever, Wikipedia is often going to be where the information is pulled out from. And um, that we want to kind of show that uh, this uh, wall or barrier between consuming and actually contributing is, uh, I don't know if I can say easy, but like, this is something that can be uh, uh, pierced through, right? Then we can actually uh, contribute as well uh, as, as consume. But you were going to say, Brendan, something. Like oh, I would just also say it's like a very strange form of writing, too, that is asking you by definition to be extremely new. Neutral. There's a code of conduct on Wikipedia, and you know you're not supposed to write articles about yourself or cite a paper that you yourself publish, et cetera, et cetera. But it's also a form of writing that's susceptible to change and contention. So there are automated bots, hundreds of them, and there are also like people who divide, devote their entire life to, to scrubbing through Wikipedia and challenging things, saying I either don't think this right is right, or there's not enough evidence to support it. I, some of the debates we've gotten into on Wikipedia are like really kind of fascinating. One of them was about the use of the term post-industrial to describe a site in Los Angeles that for 150 years there were trains on it. And for the last 
30 years, there have been no trains on it. But there's one editor who just would not let this go and said there was no evidence that this was a post-industrial site, nor that anyone understands what that term means. They eventually like achieved a compromise where they said that we could use the term post-industrial to describe the site as long as it wasn't in the header of the text, because that would bias people to thinking that it was like, you know, some hippies who had written the page and had an eco-friendly bent. But, liberals but then uh, you know we like we didn't gather people on our side these people like tune into these these showdowns or battles that go down and weigh in with their opinion so eventually like we achieved consensus post-industrial was in fact the right term to use and so now it does appear in the header of the site i'm not going to say it was easy or fun in any way uh, <laughs> to like watch that battle happen but it is extremely rewarding when you see something be created and then kind of tested and then have merit and stand up and be the kind of, I don't know, at least the version of the truth that exists at this current moment. So yeah, we're looking forward to telling you more about that stuff and we'll get all into it later. But just one suggestion, which is uh, for our last two people, Rebecca and um, Lucy, perhaps you guys want to form a commencement uh, committee and like design, you know, the way that Space Saloon ends and make it like a more positive experience than what I assume you encountered in the last several weeks or months with your own institutions. But just, just I don't know, just a suggestion. Yeah, design costume DIY that we get to do at home. <laughs> that would be really cool. Do we meet everyone except for Danny? Yeah, but that's true. But, but Danny, do you feel you've introduced yourself? Do you want to tell I feel us that most you everybody are? knows my deal right now. <laughs> um, specific to specific to Wikipedia, I'm I'm actually very fascinated because the way I use Wikipedia, um, you know, has evolved over the years. And I, when I was in school, they always told us don't use Wikipedia as a source. And now I think that that's kind of changed a little bit to use Wikipedia, but know where the sources are coming from. And mm -hmm. that's yeah. how I, that's how I normally use Wikipedia is, is I'll read something and I'll, I'll just be a little critical on like how it's being written or stated, but then I'll look at the footnotes at the end and kind of follow those links down the rabbit hole and get lost in there. And I really mm -hmm. enjoy that. Yeah, so I'm curious, sure. I'm curious how, as someone who is editing it, that aspect of like needing to cite um, and what are you citing and how public or open is that citation? Um, I'm curious about those aspects. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, I mean, we've been doing that for a few years and we've organized, uh, as the dashboard said, seven events with a lot of different editors. And we are still like um, such uh, babies in the Wikipedia world, or like complete <laughs> ignorance in the in the world of Wikipedia editors. And so, to answer your question about citation, yes, everything needs to be properly cited. Everything needs to be, like Brendan said, written in this um, uh, very like straightforward, unbiased language. Um, so it has all of these codes, and sometimes we uh most often meet them and it's all right sometimes we don't but then we get the help of um good willing uh fellow editors elsewhere that see us doing something and doing it almost right and then kind of come after us and clean a little bit to make sure that things don't get down um uh put down sometimes we do have uh uh some edits like when we organize events uh being uh, put down basically, especially when you're a new editor, your edits are going to be reviewed by uh, advanced, more advanced editors somewhere else. So I always tell the students, uh, yes, do make sure that the information you found is correct and properly cited, but don't feel too intimidated because if you do make a mistake, it will be put down anyway. So there's no, like you can't break Wikipedia, Wikipedia will break you first, right? So you don't have to worry about that, uh, which is one of uh, uh, the cool thing, right? Worst case scenario, um, the expert will come after you and best case scenario, you'll um, kind of contribute your drop to the ocean, uh, 
which which is uh, one of the thing that I think it was very uh, exciting uh, about Wikipedia. Yeah, and I think it's really as an architect or designer, it, it's interesting to shift from being a reader of Wikipedia to being a contributor to Wikipedia because you immediately understand something that maybe other people have a hard time with, which is that information is constructed, right? The Wikipedia that's there is something that's designed and maintained. It has not, it's not just a snapshot of truth, but is really a snapshot of all of the ways people have chosen to share and use the platform. And the kind of uh, network of connections really are shaped, right? And it's an ongoing process. And I think that's something that our, as architects, we can learn from and embody, but already have an inkling to do. You know, we're always kind of designing, we're always structuring relationships between things. So we hope to teach you more all about that stuff soon. And uh, we just will uh, see your responses to the form survey we sent out and go from there on Wednesday. But nice to meet everyone. Thank you for having us. So we asked one oh. last time, maybe if you guys have any questions Great. or comments, I... anything. Not to make it too complicated, I wonder um, if you guys look at different languages in Wikipedia, because I find drastic difference, right? And there's also like, I don't know, histories to trace there, how every language, every country interprets the histories. Is that what you guys also explored or? Yeah. I know Naomi. I'm on, yeah, there we go. I'm, I'm not. I'm just brand new to Duolingo, so I'm trying to do my best to remediate a problem, which is that I, like many Americans, am uh, monolingual yeah. and disconnected from the rest of the world. So I don't address that, but that's a big problem. And Noemi, of course, can do it all. Yeah, I think so. There's a few things that are interesting to point out too is that first, like English Wikipedia is like most of Wikipedia. It's like really the biggest encyclopedia, right? If you look at the stats of other languages, all the uh, main, like large European languages, uh, French, Spanish, Portuguese, uh, German, have fairly uh, rich encyclopedia. Um, but then uh, non-Western languages less and all the dialects and uh, local languages even less. So I can bring maps of that uh, that I've found that I have in mind that are uh, interesting to see how uh, basically, I mean, if even if you think the, the example of uh, Europe, if you want to read something in Catalan or in Romanche, like you won't find as much as if you're reading Spanish or whatever, right? Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is that, yes, um, translating pages is something that's, um, uh very interesting and like a great way to create new pages one thing that is tricky is that you 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 can use uh sources in foreign language in one article but only up to a certain point so you can't fully translate a page and have a hundred percent english sources like uh in a, a page in French or Spanish or whatever, but it is uh, yes often like a really uh, good good way um, to to start uh, uh, for sure to contribute. It's really fascinating to see how certain pages exist in certain languages and not others um, as well. Like I'm often very surprised and. Uh, by the way, for those of you, I mean, that's something we'll mention on Wednesday, but if you are bilingual and maybe your browser is a different language, then your Wikipedia might be by default some other Wikipedia. So my Wikipedia to this day is by default the French one. And when I Google, I get the English result. But somehow I really always have to make sure that I'm contributing to the English one because the first time when I started, I was like making those perfect edits inside an English page. And I was like, why does it keep getting put down this? Because it was uploaded to the French encyclopedia. Anyways, that's a detail, but like uh, it's, it's also uh, tricky. You have to make sure you contribute uh, the proper language to the proper encyclopedia. And that part of it is not always self explanatory. But yeah. The the question of, of uh, languages is very interesting and again it completely reflects those 
uh, uh, biases in terms of uh, being Western centric and very much like US dominated as well. And when you look at the maps of the US, it's you know very much California and the West Coast, right? So um, yeah, something else interesting to mention. Yeah, it makes me think like, because we know that there's like a certain amount of languages dying like every day, I forgot how many. I wonder if like Wikipedia could, could contribute to that or is there other ways that could be contributed to those dying languages? Yeah. yeah. It's very, it's kind of rare that you can find uh, um, some more less mainstream languages, but um, once in a while the page will be big enough that it will have something. But yeah, I think even for archiving um, some specific culture and the the politics be, behind choosing to contribute in a language or or another is uh, very uh, yeah loaded as well for sure. This is like really interesting about um, media formats in Wikipedia, which is like it's very very text heavy and there's actually pages on pages of requests for images to illustrate pages so it's there's like something very strange about the kind of death of images or it's not really death but it's like the lack of images that uh, can be used to support a wikipedia page and that in part is because of intellectual property laws like there are images as you know from google of like all kinds of things, but there are very few of them that are existing in the public domain. And that is the criteria for sharing an image on Wikipedia. You know, just like when you share text, you're releasing it out into the world and people can use it however they see fit. Uh, there's far less people who go through the process of sharing images in a way that is, you know, like legally non-binding and really says that this is public property. So that's another thing as an architect or designer that I think about a lot, which is, yeah, the translation of an idea or the sharing of an idea in an image is something that still Wikipedia is not that equipped to do on a massive scale, or at least not the same scale that the textual information is being. Do shared. people upload their images? Like, can I just yeah. release my my picture, right? Yeah, but to do so, yeah, you have to sign away all your rights, which is actually a very cool thing to do. Yep. So we'll talk about all that. I promise more on Wednesday and it's going to be super fun. Any um, question, guys? I just wanted to say like we, you know, when we started the lab and we introduced it, we talked a, a lot about different forms of practice and we we briefly brought up some um, some experiments from like the 60s and 70s and 80s and we also when we were originally talking about what to do for your workshop, you know, we we mentioned a lot of these alternative forms of kind of sharing information and I think that you know, just to think in the back of my mind, yes, we're doing a Wiki, Wikipedia edit-a-thon, but we're also talking about, in general, um, you know, how we can be a bit more active in that public sharing of, of, of this kind of important information. So um, just to say, like, you know, I'm looking at your questions right now, and a lot of them, for me at least, resonate with this idea of how to engage with your city as a more kind of active citizen in that sense. So yes. it's not so much, I mean, yes, it can go down the route of, of historian, but I think Wikipedia offers a lot more opportunities, you know, for a certain type of activism than just, you know, archivist historian. Not to say that that's any less important or valid, but, you know, it's not the only thing. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Great point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, any more thoughts, guys? Again, today is pretty, pretty um, just introductory. We'll uh, we'll keep the chat going. I think on the Discord, if, um, Brennan Noemi, you guys haven't been introduced to the Discord yet, but I'll send you the link um, cool. if you want to jump on there. And that's usually the space we use just to ask questions or to share links. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, I'll put the I'll put the survey on there for those who aren't here can can. Um, fill it out. Is there a certain? Oh, yeah. Is there a certain deadline for this? Let's say so. It's not like three four hours would be cool. Okay. So today, Let's today, see. tomorrow. Well, whatever. if it's late at night, I mean, I tomorrow think morning, it, I think whatever. It, we don't know where people are. I just, think it just became midnight for anyone in Thailand. So 
<laughs> but yeah, I think 24 anyone? hours is kind of cool because, yeah, 24 hours from okay. when we start would be oh, really great. Sorry, I thought you so, said two to four hours. No, no, 24, no, 24 hours. 24 hours. Okay. So basically, like, whatever time of the day it is now is submitted by tomorrow so that we, again, have another 24 hours to okay. uh, use it for Wednesday. Perfect. If that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, a full day, 20, yeah. Yeah, I'm already, I'm already thinking about what I, what I'd be interested in engaging with. And those who are, those who are doing the fellowship, um, I would, I would just say, you know, there is no requirement to make it specific to what you're doing, but if you're stuck and you can't really think of an idea, you know, there's lots of themes, lots of, um, topics, lots of sites, lots of people that we've been, um, working with and engaging with. So, you know, just, just putting that out there as a potential topic to, to edit. We're now on the discord channel. Oh, discord. perfect. We're, yeah. We're, we've joined the team. We're on board. Okay, what do you, what did you mean, uh, Danny, when you said potential? These are the themes. Oh, so <laughs> we've been in parallel to the workshop, Anna. We've been um, we've been meeting with some um, oh. some fellows, just working on space lean projects specifically throughout the summer. So, you know, mm. we we've, we've been running two different things this summer. I bet you. So not everyone is is in that because of time constraints or other. Cool. Any last question, last thoughts? Okay. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you on Wednesday. Please send us in the next day, 24 hours, your, your form so that we have a chance to look at it. And stay well. Take care. Yeah, thank you. See you. Nice to meet you. Bye. Thank you.